Sean Spicer's debut as press secretary came just a day into the presidency when he defended President Trump's exaggerated claims about the inauguration. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period, both in person and around the globe. His press briefings became must-see TV as Spicer sparred with reporters and quickly became fodder for late-night television. He became an unlikely cultural icon when female comedian Melissa McCarthy played Spicy on Saturday Night Live. I would like to begin today by apologizing on behalf of you to me <laughs> for how you have treated me. Spicer quit over the hiring of Anthony Scaramucci as communications director. Scaramucci is a former investment banker and Trump fundraiser who's been a fierce defender of the president. There's been, at times, a disconnect between the way we see the president and how much we love the president and the way some of you perhaps see the president. Uh, and I certainly see the American people probably see the president the way I do, uh, but we want to get that message out there. The hiring is part of a larger reshuffling at the White House. New lawyers have also been brought on. Asked what he hopes to accomplish with the staff shakeup, Trump responded with a familiar campaign refrain. Make America great again. But the new staff faces the same old issue, an intensifying investigation into alleged Russian interference in the U.S. election. Robert Mueller, the special counsel leading the investigation, is reportedly looking into Trump's business ties to Russia. Trump is said to be considering ways to limit the scope of the investigation or even fire Mueller. And according to several U.S. news outlets, the White House is exploring the ability of the president to pardon members of his family or staff, or even whether Trump can pardon himself. And late Friday, the Washington Post, citing current and former U.S. officials, reports that last year during the presidential election, U.S. intelligence agencies intercepted conversations between the Kremlin and Russian ambassador to the United States, Sergei Kislyak. In those conversations, Kislyak reportedly says he discussed campaign-related issues with Jeff Sessions, the U.S. attorney general, who was then a Trump campaign official. Sessions has claimed no campaign matters were discussed. According to the paper, the sources acknowledge that Ambassador Kislyak could have mischaracterized his conversations with Sessions. The White House declined to comment to the Post. U.S. presidents are granted wide powers to pardon individuals, but it would be unprecedented for a U.S. president to pardon himself, and it's not clear if that would be even legal. We should note that no criminal charges have been brought in this investigation, and it's not even clear if a crime has been committed. Jim Spellman, CGTN, Washington.